Now, over many decades of instrument production, there's always been the need to make the thing project. Now, this is, of course, when you haven't got electricity or pickups or anything like that to artificially make the instrument louder. So how is it done then? What methods can we use to make these instruments louder and basically get a more powerful design? Let's have a look. So the acoustic guitar is not a very loud instrument. You can still have a conversation while strumming quite hard on it. So if you're in a band situation, you're a bit stumped unless you can plug it in or they, you've got a microphone or whatever. Now, whoever designed the banjo obviously had this in mind. They had to make something that was just a bit louder. That's much, much more middly. It's basically got that mid-range grunt. And it's actually audible. Now, in the case of the, uh, the the violin market, now this was really something at the turn of the century, well, 20th century, where things like the Stro violin, which I've demonstrated on my channel, uh, you can see that if you look at the, the link below. This violin essentially has a horn to make it louder so that you can actually hear yourself um, on a gramophone record. So it really was a product of sort of problem solving of the technology that was available. Now we've got also got things like mandolins. Now this one here, this is a German mandolin, it's kind of 1930s and it sounds very nice. Nice load of top end there, it's reasonably balanced. Again, you can have a conversation while playing it. It's a, perhaps a little bit louder than the guitar, but that's only because I'm strumming all the strings. If I'm playing a single line, you're not gonna hear it. However, you have things, other bits of technology like this. This is also a mandolin, but it's got a much bigger body than that one. But actually, it's much, much weedier. So, how are we gonna solve this then? Well, we have things like this. Now, this is a Barnes and Mullins banjo mandolin. So it's kind of a banjo and a mandolin combined. You have a small skin here. Goodness knows where you can pick these up. You probably can't get a replacement. You have to make your own. And then it's sat in a heavier wooden body just to further accentuate the sound of it. Now we've got a lot more mid-range, but maybe some a little bit less top end than we had before. But because it's mid-range, it's more likely to sort of cut over a recording, maybe if you record a bit of mandolin. I own all these instruments. Lots of them were given to me, including this one. Uh, the same person that gave me the Stro violin, actually. So um, I did rather well. Um, so basically, when you're playing something like this, you've got to always keep in mind that the projection of any instrument is absolutely vital. If you just go... If you're playing it really quietly and somebody's trying to mic you up for a gig, they're just going to push the gain of the mic until it goes... Ooh, and starts to feed back. So it's all about projection with instruments like this. Now this one, you can go a bit too heavy. I mean, if, it's, if you literally are strumming a chord, it, it just sounds like a bit of a mess. So you've got to work out a kind of, you know, 60% kind of loudness. Now, of course, tuning on mandolins, because it's all absolutely minute frets, it is actually quite difficult to get one of these in tune. And that's where the bridge, the position of the bridge on any musical instrument, any string instrument, is of the utmost importance in its positioning. You have to work out where 12th fret is. So this one is actually quite good. Now, of course, you don't have individual pieces on here. Now, 
Although this mandolin has got, uh, what was it, 15, 16, 17 frets, that's quite hopeful really for a mandolin to be able to play and get any sort of tuning fidelity at this sort of, um, that sort of position. So it really does work all the way sort of down here really. Now Barnes and Mullins who made this one, they are very uh, still very much in business. It was a couple of guys, a Mr Barnes and a Mr Mullins who grew up in Bournemouth of all places in Dorset and basically joined forces to make musical instruments. And they established in sort of the late 19th century and they're still going well it's called b and m now and they still make musical instruments so there must be quite a lot right with the company and quite a lot right with the design of this it's beautifully made uh, with a skin and the bridge that has a metal top to it as well so that you retain the brightness of the strings so a few of these instruments here we've just got to be aware of how they work in order to get the very best from them